right, round three. Today we are going to talk about the worst buys that I've ever done at Record Store Day in the past five or six years since I started participating in it. As you guys know, Record Store Day this year is a little different. They're doing RSD drops, a little socially distanced three date stint uh, with truncated lists on each day. I don't quite know how I feel about it. Today, we're gonna go on the darker side and talk about my least favorite buys, the regrettable things, the things that I should have waited or maybe not bought at all. If you haven't already, it'd be awesome if you'd like this video, hit the red subscribe button, and turn your bell notifications on so you don't miss out on any weekly videos I put out. So leave a comment with your least favorite record store device so I can see what else I thankfully missed out on or commiserate with you on actually getting it as well. First up, we have Nas Stillmatic. Now this is my favorite Nas record. I know that's sacrilegious and it should be Illmatic. I disagree. I think that the beats on here are far superior to Illmatic. Maybe not what he's saying lyrically. I think uh, Illmatic is more poetic overall, but I think this album is much more fun to listen to front to back. It's a lot more diverse and Nas is a little more experienced as a rapper and I think it really shows through with a lot of the style he decides to rap in and uh, just overall the song structures for me are more impressive mostly on here. That being said, I bought Stillmatic because it had been out of print for a long time and they were doing it on this cool silver vinyl um, and I was like, yeah, of course, I have to pick this up. I think I paid almost 30 bucks for it, um, which, you know, for a nice gatefold on colored vinyl for Record Store Day, that seemed like a steal. Uh, only thing that got stolen was my money. Even now, over a year later, you can find this for 10 to $15 regularly. Even a couple days after Record Store Day, it was about that price. I have no idea why this is so cheap, but this is one of those moments where I'm like, oh man, I mean, it was only, you know, $15 less than I spent, but it makes you feel kind of dumb when you go back to your haul and you see a bunch of the stuff that you overspent for because Record Store Day tends to have stuff that's a little pricier than usual and you can find it for face value or cheaper within a week. Um, that kind of takes away from Record Store Day's kind of warm fuzzy feeling after the fact when all of a sudden you realize you overspent on hype and you could have just sat home in your PJs eating popcorn buying them on the store's websites. Same thing happened with this guy, Jeff Buckley, live at Chennai. Uh, this is a famous Jeff Buckley live concert. I've heard it digitally a million times. I still cannot bring myself to open this because I'm so mad at uh, how much I spent. If you guys saw on Instagram, I just talked about this in the 30 day vinyl challenge I'm doing this month, which is uh, the record I regret buying the most. And I think it's this one, not because it's a bad recording. This is an amazing live performance and Jeff Buckley is obscenely talented. That being said, this was almost $90 retail. And I think a, a day or two later, I found it for $50, $40 on Discogs, and even now, years later, you can still find it for about 50 bucks. I cannot believe a box set of someone so legendary and such a great performance tanked in price so hard. I don't even have an explanation for it. All I know is that I should not have spent $90. I should have been patient. Um, one day I'll open it, but I gotta get over my saltiness first. Next up, we have Jose Gonzalez Veneer. I know what you're thinking. Am I joking? Is this a joke? Am I punking you? As you know, Jose Gonzalez is one of my favorite musicians, easily top 10 likely top five, and his music for me is pure magic. Well, this in particular was a special Record Store Day release because they were releasing his album Veneer, and then the Stay in the Shade EP that he also did. Um, the Stay in the Shade EP was on white vinyl, and Veneer itself was on this kind of like marbly tan color that matches the cover pretty nicely, actually. I was stoked. Jose Gonzalez has a couple colored issues, but not too many. Um, and for me, I was like, anything that's more from Veneer, I'm super down for. Uh, this album is so sparse, so magical. And unfortunately, uh, this recording, uh, this pressing of this recording is ass. It is horrible. It is clicky, it is noisy, and it is not just my copy. I went on Discogs and I looked and everyone has the complaint about this. It is really disturbingly loud for how soft and beautiful the music is. I have a original 200 gram press of veneer that is light years better. It is just such a night and day difference. And this album really deserves absolute silence. It cannot have surface noise. It cannot have audible pops. This is such a mellow and contemplative album that anything that distracts from that is really gonna be magnified. And unfortunately, this is borderline unlistenable at times. 
So uh, even though I will spin the EP every now and then, because it's the only way to get it on vinyl, the actual album of Veneer is not really getting played in this version because I have a better version. Just a miss for Record Store Day. And then a few more that I'm gonna talk about that I'm just gonna pop right here because I sold them at TMR Fest at a huge loss or traded them uh, because they were things that also, like the first couple I showed you, dropped in value substantially or were a terrible pressing and I had to get rid of them. So first up, we have Of Montreal, Snare Lustrous Doomings. This is a live album by Of Montreal, which I will say is one of my favorite live bands ever. Uh, Kevin puts out the most theatrical live show ever. He sounds amazing live, and it's always different every single time you go. There's a different set of songs, different theatrics, different energy. It's really one of the more unique acts I've ever seen live, and I've seen them maybe seven or eight times. That being said, this pressing in particular is very lo-fi, very muddy, very noisy, uh, and it does not do that live show justice at all. Um, it had a nice thick gatefold and it had good colored vinyl to go with it, but all of those bells and whistles cannot take away from how bad that recording was. Then we have Explosions in the Sky, the Lone Survivor OST. The score for Lone Survivor is done by post-rock legends Explosions in the Sky. Pretty much everything EITS touches is amazing. I mean, they have such a way with soundscapes. They are the some of the forefathers of post-rock, uh, and they are amazing. Every one of their albums has merit. Some are better than others, but all are at least very good. This is a good album. Um, it was uh, really expensive at Record Store Day. It was $36, I believe, at my store. And right now, you could go on Discogs and find a sealed copy for less than $10. What? I, I truly don't understand how something can be priced so high and then aftermarket becomes so low for a band that's so respected and appreciated. Um, this was a huge bummer that I spent that much money on it. Again, I should have waited. Same thing with Daedalus, Invention, and The Quiet Party. Excited to get those two albums on wax. It was a really nice packaging. It was a really nice concept. I believe it was on blue colored vinyl. And I brought it home. It sounded good even. But I spent like, I think $35, $40 on this double album. And now you can get it for 10 or 15. I have trouble convincing myself to line up for Record Store Day these days because so often you overspend after waiting hours and hours in line for something that you could just get at that record store site when they put leftovers up for half the price sometimes. The next two are in the same vein. We have Electronic Meditation by Tangerine Dream. I love Tangerine Dream. Amazing early electronic act. Uh, the original version of this, the first press goes for a lot of money. So I was like, oh, this will be a great buy for like 25, 30 bucks. A new repress. I'm sure it sounds great. Again, dropped to 10 or $15 and remains there years later. And then Andre Nicotina, I bought this for I think $30 and uh, it's currently between 10 and 15. He is a Bay Area rapper who I really liked him back when I lived in the Bay Area as a kid. Um, I re-listened to it after buying it and not only was this a bad purchase investment wise, I just didn't really love the album. It was kind of like, oh man, this is nostalgic and then it kind of fell flat. So uh, this was another one that I made a mistake on buying. And the last one is not one I'm actually going to talk about. It is a spot reserved for probably something I'm going to end up buying this year. I feel like every single year, while there are some amazing finds, like the ones I showed in the video prior to this, there's always at least one record that I feel dumb for buying. And I feel like, man, I don't know why I got excited and bought into the hype for this. I don't like this record, or I could have spent half the money if I just waited a week. So be careful with Record Store Day. Don't just buy everything you've ever heard of because you just get washed up in this amazing holiday for record fans. Be smart about your purchases. Try to figure out which ones are probably not gonna get a repress, which ones are gonna sound good on wax ideally, and which ones you think might drop in price based on pressing size or the label it's on. Do some research. You can be smart about your purchases, smarter than I've clearly been. Leave a comment below with either the worst records you ever picked up at Record Store Day or make a prediction. Let me know what you think the worst record this year is going to be in terms of value or in terms of the quality. And I'm not talking about the artists. Let's not try to bash artists. Just talk about it from a purely technical and price standpoint. I look forward to seeing what you guys pick. And tomorrow's Record Store Day, so I hope you guys get everything you want. Uh, and I hope that you have a great time. And let's talk about it in the Facebook group. Thanks for watching, guys. Take it easy.